And hello again, and here we are, this time in my conservatory at the back of the house, where I've got an awful lot of parts all boxed up, as you can see. And these boxes are only a small portion of all the boxes I've got in this conservatory. To the side and to the back of the camera, there's even more boxes. And these boxes are full of modified parts, some for the GPZ project, some for other projects, some that are the carryovers and bits I've not used so far. So yeah, there's an awful lot of boxes. Anyway, let's get started. So in the last few weeks, we've been quite busy. And the first thing that's happened is that the engine has gone off to Camco, a local company, to be given a ceramic coating, which is quite an expensive uh, finish. I just received those engine cases back, and in total, it cost me £582, and that's for the complete engine. You know, the crankcases, barrel, cylinder head, and so on. So, all those parts are all wrapped up safely, but here we have one of those parts, and this is the can cover, so let's get this open and I can show you what it looks like. So this is a very hard wearing finish, very thin though, very thin. Um, it does show some of the flaws in the aluminium beneath, if you had any corrosion or any sort of um, you know, problems, scratches, dents, it will show through. Luckily this particular part is in pretty good condition, so that's not an issue. So, I could have gone for powder coating. Now, powder coating gives a similar finish, but it's a lot thicker, and it covers up all those little flaws and dents and little uh, problem scratches in the surface of an engine case. I didn't do that though, because this finish is a lot harder wearing. Powder coat is basically paint. Now, it's thick paint, and it's applied very well, but it does scratch quite easily. But this stuff doesn't, it's actually really hard. You can probably scratch it with a, uh, two or something like that, it doesn't really care. So that's why I went for that to the finish. However, I can't yet start to build up the engine because during the process, of course, the case has to be blasted. And the blasting medium goes in all the oil galleries, all the little nooks and crannies, and they've all got to be cleaned out before you can even begin to rebuild the engine. Now the cases, the crank cases, aren't too bad because the gallery is quite big and you know not really a problem. The problem we do have though is with, make sure we drop that, the problem we have is with the cylinder head because the oil galleries to the cams are quite small and difficult to get at. However, we do have a solution and now I think this is the third or fourth cylinder head I'm going to use that solution on. And what we do is we remove the alloy plugs at the end of the oil galleries that Kawasaki fitted when the head was made. Once we've done that, we can then blow out the oil galleries and make sure there are no little bits of grit in there. And when we're happy, we can then either make new plugs and knock them in, or in my case, I prefer to uh, tap in a thread and then put a grub screw in there with plenty of Loctite, and hopefully that's a good solution. Now, I haven't done that yet with this particular cylinder head, but I have done it with quite a few beforehand, which I filmed. So I'm going to show you a clip of where we did that with another Z650 head. Have you gone through now? I went through that. There you go. There we go. It's come out. That's one out, eh? Four to go. Okay. Right, so we've just taken out all of these holes to 8.5. Because we're going to put an, an M10 tap okay. in it. Yeah. Just mind your eye there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this. Oh, bloody hell. Close your eyes. God, it's coming back out. Yes. you need to do is that for it's as like long a, as possible. It's like playing a flute, you've yeah. got to close off the holes that uh, feed the oil up mm. to the cams and do one at a time. Well, I think we're on. And I can usually, and I can look down the, there and there, and it'll give you sort of... A good guide. A certainly to, for good enough for... Oh, it's only a plug. Yeah, I know, but you don't want them... It, Wandering off. You want to try and get as decent you know to the hole oh, yeah, yeah. if they start wandering off it's not going to get any thread oh. and it's not going to seal so mm -hmm. they've got to be relatively accurate mm -hmm. 
Right, so we've now drilled and tapped out these. What they called? Yeah. Uh, well, oil galleries, uh, oil holes. Yeah. They're, they're now at Tenby 1.5. Yes. Now, one point what we didn't realise, what I should have realised, was that the oil feed is only about 10 mil in from here. So when we put a plug in, we're going to make sure we don't go more than 10 mil because it would. Well, it's a big hole. It's not so a big hole, but nevertheless. Well. Look Even if you block half of it, well, it's don't... still going to get the oil through. We don't want to do that. Yeah. So no. And now here we are back again. And so I will be repeating that process for my GPZ cylinder head in the next few days. Moving on, then I've also had some work done on the frame. Jeff uh, just attached the various brackets and things that I want to add to the frame with just uh, a simple spot weld. And so I took the whole frame over to my friend Jeff the Welds place where he finished all the welds off and cleaned up those welds. And so here's a quick clip that I took with my mobile phone just the other day. So with the welding completed on the frame, I took it to a local company to be powder coated. That company I'm not used before, but I'm assured they're all right, so fingers crossed they'll do a good job. Now normally I take the frame to Triple S over in West Yorkshire, but right now I can't spare the two half days to take it there and go and collect it, so that's why I'm going to try out a new company who are local to me. So we'll see how well they do. And I should be getting that frame back in the next few days. So moving on then, I've also been busy with the front end and the back end of the bike. Behind me here in this box is the uh, swing arm. Now I've already had some work done on that to repair some damage caused by a crash. But when I got the uh, swing arm back a while ago, I realised there's some more damage that I didn't initially notice. That's going to go back to Jeff the Welders where he can fill that damage with weld, get it all finished, and then this swing arm can go off to be either powder coated or somebody coated or some other clever coating. I've actually been thinking about giving the swing arm a Cerakote finish. I had a chat with Nick at Camcoat who did the work on the engine and he told me all about the different options. And it's quite interesting because I do know that Cerakote's very expensive to use. So if they buy a test sample bottle, which is quite small, that's 35 pounds. And that's enough to do a small part. You know, it wouldn't do a frame, it wouldn't do a, a, a wheel. It might do a wheel, but it probably wouldn't do two wheels. The next size up is a pint, and that's £105. So if they have to buy a pint of this stuff, you've got to pay £105 first, along with the cost of actually doing the work, of blasting and coating and so on. So I'm tempted to have the wheels and the swing arm given that sort of Cerakote finish. Not a cheap finish, but it's apparently very hard wearing, but I'm still thinking about it, so we shall see about that. So moving on then, um, Jeff has been busy working on the back end and the front end of the bike. So uh, I took some video of that work last week. And so once again, we'll just uh, show you that video and you can see how far we've got so far. Use the old telefunken, is it? Yeah, I haven't got my camera, so I've just got the uh, phone at the moment. So, quick update. You've now finished making the stem that you've got in your hand. Well, modifying. Modifying uh, it, yeah. Yes, our stainless top at e thingy, yes. whatever you want to call it. So is that now one ready. There. We've had the lug welded into the bottom of that, and it's yes. ready to 10mm. Yes. Which we're now about to put that stainless counter thing in, mm -hmm. lock tighted with 648. 648, yeah. Wind it in, let it go off, and then I can just machine it nice. Yeah, and then that put a nice polished cut on it. And right, then, and then that'll go that's into. Ready, then if you, if you grab that, yeah. For, we'll warm the yolk up, and then yeah. that should just 
into the first thing. And then that, it ain't coming out. That little lip there, right. obviously. However, before you do that, before you do that, you need to remove oh, we'll the lock stops. Bit, yeah. The lock stops. Because we're not needed them anymore, we've got our own lock stop. I'll, I'll, yeah, because oh. you, you're using them, I take it. Oh, yes, but they're not using them. Handy for something, yeah, they so will come in handy, yes. I'll be. Yeah, remove them and yeah. clean it up, and it's. But like that lip on there. If you want to reduce it a bit, you can, but uh, it's going to be black when it's all finished, so. It'll probably look neater if we can just. Yeah, if you want to yeah. smooth that in, it'll Yeah, you want to do a bit of a finishing on there? The original casting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Casting. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's that. Is. And then, looking at what's on the bench right now, you've been busy, and you've now made a good start on making. Well, it's done. Yeah. Well, just, you've got to shape it now. Look, I've, I've had to file that round there. Yeah, by but hand. Just wants, yeah, because your miller's well, not got the power. That so. sort of thing, even doing it on the miller, is it's still not, slow. Yeah. Uh, you could take the two little things off on the rotary table, but getting that it's in, still a, yeah, slow. I've left it wide here because I think yes. it sort of. Yeah, yeah. And then I sort of took it in there. Trying yeah. to balance it. Yeah, I think you can see the lines that you've drawn there. Yeah. That's where you well, well, have it a look. Take it down to that yeah. point. And then over here, we've got the bar. For, yeah, that'll go. That'll go there. Somewhere there. And that'll go onto there. Yeah. And that Connected where, well. Yeah, that looks a bit big at the moment, but we'll, we'll, we'll machine, we'll machine it, it, and then that what down I'll do, the middle. I'll yeah. taper it down in yes. the middle. Yeah. So, yeah, you did it last you time. You know, to but, about 15 mil or 16 yeah, yeah. mil. Yeah. And then all this lot. Give it a little bit of, In fact, I can take it today, actually. All yeah. this lot can go. Um, I've actually already taken the swing arm, sorry, the swing arm, the frame to be powder coated, so it's a bit late for that. But I might try a different kind of finish on this because it's aluminium. Mm -hmm. I might go for a sort of coat or ceramic coating that's quite hard wearing, just in case the chain might hit it or whatever. But I've not decided yet. Yeah. Depends on cost, because Cerakote costs an absolute fortune. I have got a brand new set of bearings. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we've taken the bearings out. Les has still got the aluminium. I'm sure he's still got it. Yes, yeah, I made, that, I made, you made something, didn't you? You know, for putting Drews back in, yes. you know, so you can pull... But you don't, uh, don't knock them in, just, just gently... Just put a WD on them and, yes. just, sort of, yeah. and just wind them Well, we're on. still a long way from that, because yeah. I've, I've got to get the whole thing... Yeah. Um, I've got to get the whole thing coated. Coated, yeah. It's a bit annoying, really, because I've got a beautiful rear wheel that I can't use, a gold one. I've got a beautiful front one, <laughs> the, which is gold. Well, let's actually this now, does it's not pretty match. much balanced. Yes. It, it, I mean, obviously, I've not checked Yeah, you're pretty it, central. It's pretty... Uh, to pretty within central. a few millimetres, yeah. yeah. it's not... One. And obviously, the space you've used are all stainless. They're all stainless, yeah. On both sides, that's yeah. great. Even so, the, all stainless, and even though you can't see much of the one on the screen. Yeah, so. yeah. So although things might be yeah. appearing to be quite slow, things are moving along. Yeah. Now, also here we've got oops, oh. the, the top yoke yeah. that I've done some. And my failed first. Oh yeah. yeah. We'll ignore that. We'll ignore that. <laughs> Calculation. So I've error. actually got here a nice pair of risers, handlebar risers. I'm going to try and drill this because I think it's um, it's not easy because if you look at that, there are some ridges in there that get in the way, but um, hopefully we well, can make it work. Do. What I'll do, I'll hopefully try and get it on the miller, mm -hmm. and what I'll do is I'll go in, find the two points, Yes. and I'll go in with a slot mill drill, and if it just catches one of the webs, not in the, world, the Allen bolt, yeah. not in the world. I'll try and get them in yeah. a position, I'm, I'm thinking something, yeah, yeah, be just, fine. Just around there yeah. and around. I'll, well, I'll balance at it the out. minimum, it's seven mil thick, which I think yeah. is plenty, to be honest. And at the maximum, it's about yeah. 13, so. Because there's a web there. There's a, there's a web there. Yeah, it's if in. It, a... if it, in fact, if it cut into that web a little bit. Yeah. Because the webs actually aren't the same, are they? They're different no, on both sides. Well, it's, it's just completely. Well, that, there's that, that one's coming off. Yes, it? yeah, that was part of the yeah. um, ignition lock um, mount, as, as it were, so which I've chopped off. Don't want that. Anyway, so that's next. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you see, you've got here the original oh, um, the engine mounts. Yeah, just got to shape them. Uh, got to shape them, drill them. Valley. As I say, the uh, frame's off at the moment, being this, powder coated. There's more there for the footrest bracket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> that'll be a long way, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, the engine's off. The engine's gone off to be uh, coated. All the cases are off. Being given a very expensive, high tech ceramic coating. They'll be about two or three weeks from now, and then things will start to move again. Right, so that's great. So in fact, I can now take all that home apart from the bracket. Yeah, and uh, I'll keep the bracket in shape. Yes, yes and now, I don't know if you want any fancy holes. What um, fancy holes? Nah, no, no. Just, like, just 
Leave it as it is. It's quite a nice well, The more holes and things you get on it, the, yeah. the more you've got to clean it. Yeah. And you know. I managed to put a little scribe line on it there, so when you get it back, you can. Oh, I've got to spend it. five hours bloody polishing it. No, you it. won't. You'll hardly bloody. I'll curse you. Yeah. I've only done it lightly. That's what you always say. You always yeah. put bloody scribe lines on things that I get, just so I've got to spend five million hours polishing it out. I know. Yeah. There's a I know. washer there off the original. Yeah. Set. Oh, and also. <laughs> Whether 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 that will be actually needed, um, unlikely, but we'll see. Well, also here we've got the uh, other stainless parts, box and bits, engine mounts, and you, you can take the, all that. Yeah, right? yeah. And, yeah. And, and this is a stainless um, with spindles for the swing arm. Yeah, with two sets of washers that are made. Yes, just skim down. Yes, marvelous. And hopefully, when it's all finished, it'll look good. And so we're going to make another one of them. Uh, two, two more actually. Two, two? two more. Yeah. Also have to. I'll have to make another. Yeah, two yeah. more. I need two more. Two more. Yeah. yeah. Well, you've made, well, yeah. you've made about two or three, haven't you? So yeah. I think you're uh, well practiced now in making them. Yeah, those for, for other projects, though. So that's it for the time being. Yeah. Things are moving on slowly, very slowly. I've got, still got plenty of little things to do. Absolutely. If you're wondering why we get yeah, it's bloody cold. cold in here, yeah, no heat in here. Right, so that's it for now, and we'll come back hopefully when all that's finished, and I'll have the um, I'll have the uh, frame back from Paracotas. I'm trying a different place now, a local place, and hopefully it'll do a good job for me, and uh, should look pretty good when it's all together. It will do. Right, and so as you can see, there's been quite a lot of work going on in the last couple of weeks. I mean, the next week or so, we should be getting the frame back, and then we can make more progress. However, one problem I've got at the moment is getting the right parts for the bike. Now, behind here somewhere, there's a box labelled up as a, a fuel tank for a 650. I bought it off eBay, it looked to be in excellent condition for a good price. I was very pleased to have it. But when I opened the box up, it wasn't from a 650. It was actually a tank from, I think, a 550 LTD. So it's not used to me, I'd have to go back. And that's something I found quite a lot recently, folks, are selling things on eBay and saying that they're for a particular bike, a 650, a GPZ 70, and they're not, they're for something else. Now, usually you can tell, because you can think, oh yeah, that's obviously not from a 650, but sometimes you can't tell. It might be a, a transmission, it might be a part of the engine that you can't really tell, it's not the right thing. So that's been a bit of a problem recently. So my search goes on to find a good fuel tank for the bike. And that's not easy because I look at quite a lot for sale on eBay. Oh my God, they're in such poor condition. They've been dented to hell, rusted to hell, or both. And the few I found that look to be in decent condition, they want, oh my God, four, five hundred pounds for an old fuel tank? No, I'm not paying that, no way. I actually once did buy a, a brand new fuel tank for a Z1 from Japan. They still make them, but sadly, they don't make them for a, a 650. If they did, I'd go and buy a brand new one from Japan, but no, they don't make one. Anyway, the search goes on. However, one thing I have bought recently is a complete transmission from a 2002 ZR7S. Now, the ZR7S is the last iteration of the Kawasaki 650 stroke 750 family of engines. And the reason why I bought that transmission is because A, the output shaft of mine was worn, where the uh, sprocket fits, it was all tatted, I think it had uh, come loose at some point, so it's no good. But also because the output shaft is longer than on a standard 650 or 750. And that's because the ZR7S had a slightly wider back wheel. And that's great news for me because it means it makes it easier to line up the chain sockets on the back end of my bike because I'm fitting a 180 rear tyre with a 5.5 inch rim. That's even wider than was fitted to the ZR7S, but I think we can manage to work things out. So that will make life a bit easier. I mean, I have to use an offset sprocket, for example, on on the engine, so we'll see. But I've got that now, I've checked it all out, it looks to be in excellent condition. And because there's not much demand for those things, for transmissions, people don't tend to need them. The price is pretty good. I think I paid about uh, 75 pounds for a complete transmission. I actually only needed uh, the output shaft, but I've got the whole thing. So that's probably much better condition anyway than the one that came out of my GPZ engine, given that, God, it's uh, what, from 83 to, 2002, it's a lot, it's like 20 years younger, so hopefully, you know, that'll go straight in the engine with no problems. So yeah, that's uh, quite a good buy. Right, so as you can see, lots of things going on, but I can't really show you the bike coming together yet. 
In fact, that can be a bit of a problem because I've got no space. One reason I'm in here is because the garage is now full up completely and I'm not sure how the hell I'm gonna build a bike in there or in here when all the parts come together. I have sold a bike, that's due to be collected, I'm not sure when, that's actually just behind the camera, and that should give me a bit more breathing room, so to speak, because I can move the bikes around, because in here right now I've got my uh, 2.2 litre Harley custom bike, soft tail, I've got my Norley that spends the winter in here, actually haven't been in very much because it's really uncomfortable and it needs a bit of work. Behind the camera I've got my uh, Ducati 888, and behind the camera around the corner I've got my my old drag bike, my old Harley drag bike, and that's the thing that I've sold. And that, and that bike actually is being sold mainly for the transmission and the engine and the primary, and that's gonna go into a really cool trike for somebody that I know. Um, yeah, so that's Paul from Hull. Hello, Paul. Uh, hopefully he'll come and collect it quite soon and get on with his, uh, his, his, his own project, and he can send me the other photograph when he's uh, finished it. I'm sure it'll look pretty damn cool. Right, so we'll continue this video then when I get the frame back, and we can do a bit more work on the wrong chassis. And now here we are, it's the next day, and as you can see, I've just collected the frame from my local powder coaters. And I must say they've done a pretty good job. Very good price. This was about £150, including the battery box and the electrics tray. In comparison, Triple S were really, really good. They're getting on now for about £300 for that same kind of work. That said, of course, Triple S do have a better finish because they use very expensive finely ground powder in the powder coating so while this is quite acceptable and I doubt you'll be able to tell the difference unless you look really closely it's not quite as good as Triple S which I expected but overall I'm really happy with it and they also of course remembered to uh, tape up all the threaded holes and the steering head bearings but well, there you go so there's no powder coat in there which is great so yeah overall I'm really happy with this frame. Now I do have a couple more things I can actually bolt to this frame right now and they're just over there so let me get them and get them on the frame. And so as you can see I fitted the front part of the rear mudguard which is plastic, I had to buy that and I've made this stainless steel splash plate here for the rear part since I won't be using the original uh, chromed rear mudguard because I don't have one and they're heavy and I don't like them. So next then with this I need to fit the tail section and then work out how to make a bracket to carry the rear lamp, which of course is also non-standard. Well first I can fit this, the battery box, which has also been powder coated. It's pretty straightforward, it just drops in, held in place by four bolts. So I've got to find four stainless steel bolts. And so there's the battery box now bolted to the frame. Now I also have this, this is an electrics plate that bolts the side of the battery tray but I might not be using this because the bike won't be having standard electrics so I won't fit that for now but maybe it might come in handy one day and next moving on to the front of the bike we've made this I can't touch it because it's still a bit uh, wet I've just painted it what this is is a steel piece we've made and welded that bolts here to the front of the frame this tube slides over this, uh, this part here, which is the original steering lock. We've done that because when we fit the R6 yokes, that's not enough, the steering lock's too much for the bike. So with this bolted into place over here, that fatter piece gets the steering lock spot on when I'm using the, uh, the R6 front end. As I say, I can't touch it yet because it's still drying off. And so this is about as far as I can get for this week. But in the next video, we will hopefully have this frame as a running chassis so I want to work on the front end the yokes and so on the forks the wheels and the swing arm and of course the rear end and now I've got the uh, engine cases back I can start to work on the engine as well perhaps start to rebuild the engine so but all that is going to be for the next video and so that's it for now and so thanks for watching and cheers <laughs>